My name is Hub Harrington. Um, I'm a circuit judge. I was. I just retired from Shelby County, Alabama. I want to tell you the rest of Mr. Mann's story. And I'll try not to get so angry. Uh, but I can't help it. The judge that did this to him also had about 12 other municipalities. One of them was Harperville, which is where Mr. Mann had lived before. But Mr. Mann probably doesn't even know this. I have a case landed on my desk, so I know about this judge. I want to change the focus a little bit. We've been talking about the victims. What about the perpetrators? This judge was a judge for 12 municipalities around the Birmingham area, all throughout Alabama. And that JCS outfit, there it's different. But they can't do anything if they don't have co-conspirators, which has got to be the judge, so-called judge. We've got the laws in place. We already have the laws you can't put indigent people in jail without a hearing. I mean, that, we have these laws. We don't need more laws. We can enforce the ones we've got. How do we enforce the ones we've got? We hold the people who don't enforce them accountable. This guy, when I saw what happened, by the way, Mr. Mann was probably never convicted of the crime. The case that landed on my desk, people were being jailed for 10 year old traffic tickets, there was no order. This judge wrote on a docket sheet, PG, pled guilty, $250. That was it. He would extend people's probation. Totally, uh, probation on traffic tickets? That's for felons. This JCS outfit also charged 45 bucks a month more on top of the ticket. And then you also had the fees, court calls, penalties. It was outrageous. One guy who's on Social Security disability, our probate judge, had sent him, committed him involuntarily half a dozen times, owed $10,000. That his writ of habeas corpus landed on my desk. And that's what started a lot of this in Alabama. And we've got lawyers here from Alabama who are handling these cases. <coughs> Baker Donaldson. Um, there's several that they're going on now. Everybody knows that they're breaking the law. They're still doing it because they want the money. We're only solving them one case at a time. Nobody's lost one yet because it's so egregious. Why is it so egregious? Because the judge that's doing it is getting away with it. The city council, they're getting away with it. There is no individual culpability, responsibility, What's happening? The insurance companies are getting tagged to write the check. What, when this came, and when I saw it, and I saw what this judge was doing, nobody in these dozen municipalities were ever really being convicted of a crime. They certainly weren't getting lawyers. They were never having a Rule 26. Uh, in Alabama, that's what it is. They were never having an indigency hearing. Nothing. I, the, I can't tell you the egregious violation. <coughs> what did I took all of these documents? I went to the Justice Department. I went to the Attorney General's office. I went to the Judicial Inquiry Commission. I went to the Alabama State Bar. I wanted him disbarred. I wanted him jailed. He's now an administrative law judge back to me somewhere else in the state of Alabama because they did work out a deal to where he would resign and not be a municipal judge anymore. I really want to put him in jail. No way. But I want to change the focus just for one second. We've been talking about the victims. The, and it's nice the legislature want to raise taxes and fund stuff. That's never going to happen. Unless there's some legislation, unless there's some consequences for these absolute known violations of 
well set, not well set law. <coughs> and it's just like letter, there's not a debate about this. Had it been for years and years and years. And so you turn the courts into a profit center, this is what you get. Thank you, Judge. individual consequences for people who are the purpose. Thank you. thank you. I want to thank the members of the panel. Our time has run out. Uh, thank you all so much. Thank the three of you for coming and uh, setting forth your stories to, to make it real for the folks in the room and to the legislators. Thanks for what you've done and thanks for, for what you'll continue to do in this space. It really makes a difference. Thank you all very much. <laughs>